we can do better. Nicole took me to one of her favorite places up in Dallas. I was not impressed, so this is going to be the first episode of Let's Do It Better series. We're going to be making some Reuben sandwiches. Start out with some sauerkraut. Slice it nice and thin, 2% salt solution. Get an extra person to help you squeeze out all the juices. All it's going to be is salt, cabbage, and water. Push it down until that water floats above. You can use a Ziploc bag, fancy fermentation, weights, whatever you want. This is going to ferment for two weeks. Make sure to burp for it every once in a while so you don't have a pipe bomb go off in your house. And then we're going to toast off our spices for our pickling blend. I'm just using a store-bought made pickling spice. You can make your own if you want. Add in your pink curing salt, brown sugar, and kosher salt to a portion of the water and boil it down. This is just making sure it's dissolved into the solution. Add the rest of your water into a large enough container. We're going to be doing a full-size packer brisket. Got this one cheap, cheap, 99 cent a pound, so it's a good test bed. Five days later, let's take this out of the brine. We're going to go ahead and rinse this off, season it up with a little spice blend. I'll show you how, and let's throw it on smoker. We're going to be seasoning with one to one 16 mesh black pepper, ground coriander, and then about a half part of ground mustard and garlic powder. No salt in this rub. That brine is plenty salty in five days in the cure. This brisket definitely has enough salt in it. So I'm going to keep it pretty traditional Texas style barbecue, heavy black pepper with more of that Reuben style stuff, like especially with that coriander in there. I'm going to smoke it all the way through until about 165. Then we're going to full boat wrap it. Shout out to Chud's Barbecue. I'm going to be cooking this all the way through Texas barbecue style. So I'm going to track the rest of the coke with the Thermo Pro Temp Spike Plus. Just going to let it go all the way to about 200 degrees. Start checking for probe tenderness. Once you got that good bark on there, it's probe tender. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up for the night. This is going to be the recipe for two marble rye loaves. Have it if you want one. Bust out the stand mix or do it by hand if you want. Throw in our poolish recipe, our water our diastatic malt powder and salt mix that together just get it combined add in our flour mix everything in there let it into it come to a sh nice shaggy dough and get some good strength scrape off the, so the size of the bowl once it starts coming together pretty good add in your coriander seeds once it passes that pull test and nothing shears i'm going to call it good on the gluten so far Take about 40% of your dough, mix in your cocoa powder and molasses. Cocoa powder for color and molasses for flavor. That's just going to give you your nice marbling in the end in your loaf. Shape these up into nice tight balls. We're going to let these proof for about 30 minutes. And then we're going to do some strength building folds to help with that final rise. So 30 minutes later, we're going to pop a lid off, give it a nice stretch and fold. So you're going to grab all four corners, pull it up, let that dough kind of overlap. All you're doing is overlapping the gluten strands, building up that dough strength. Same thing, round it off, pop any large bubbles on top. Let these proof to about double in size. Took about an hour, hour and a half for me. Nice and jiggly. Drop some flour down on your work surface. These should slide right out if they're nice and proofed. So we're going to flatten them out with a rolling pin. You can do it by hand, but I get more uniform results with a rolling pin. You want the light portion a little bit bigger than your dark portion. Then you're going to press it seam down really hard into there. You're going to shape it up like a nice tight baguette. Go slow as you go. If you don't flour in this step, it, that bread is just going to stick right to that work surface. Flatten into your loaf pan until it's nice and bubbly like this. It passes a poke test. That's when it springs back nice and slow, but doesn't leave a permanent indent. So preheat your oven, spritz with a little bit of water. This is going to help add some steam to the environment, help with that oven spring for the bread. Close it off and cook until it's nice and golden brown like this. Should sound nice and hollow and have an internal temp of 205 to 207. Look at that beautiful marbling. My first attempt at this did not look near this pretty. You got to be real careful when you're folding. That's the only way you get the nice pretty rolls. We're going to cut up that brisket. Turns out on a full packer, I needed more than five days. The flat is a little bit better. It's still a really good cook. Passes the bend test. Tear is easy. The end of the flat is perfect, so we're going to be using this for the sandwiches. Cut it nice and thin. Uh, next time, I'm going to do thinner than that. We're going to make a quick little Russian dressing. I'll have the recipe down in the description. This is going to just really help cut through all that heavy cured meats and other things we got going on in the sandwich. Top it off some Swiss cheese in one side. We're going to stack it high with that smoked pastrami. Add in our sauerkraut. That's two week took two weeks in advance. Add in, in your Russian dressing in one side. Close it off, toast it off into a pan until you get some nice, beautiful golden color on one side. You want that texture change? Really brightens up that dish. Beautiful looking sandwich. Let's go ahead and dig on in.
heavy. That was really good. Really heavy after that sandwich I am stuffed. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe for more. We'll see you next time.